Dakota Johnson as Madam Webb. She's a paramedic. She's the kind of people shy and a little awkward. You have a winning personality. I guess I got yours by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> and out of the three teenage girls, one's the shy, timid one, one's the more complex one, and one's the more sassy one. Apparently, what else do you need? Ben Scott is always a pleasure to see on screen, and here's no different. Oh, the character Ezekiel, the main bad guy, the Jeremy Johns looking mother. If you knew what I knew, you'd do the same thing. Yeah, no. Oh, I'm sorry. No. Mm. And it's one thing when half his dialogue sounds so obviously dubbed as it is. It's as if he's at a school play trying to play a bad guy for the little kids, you know, and it's just, no. Ezekiel Simpson is a fascinating villain who, possessing human strength and health, has been searching for that spider for years. And these may allow him to see his own death. What you say? Ezekiel Simpson is a fascinating villain. He becomes obsessed with finding his killers. The question is, does knowing his future save him from it? Look, I'm, I'm trying to find better ways to describe the way I feel about this. I'm trying to give some better points. When you watch a movie that's as mind-meltingly uh, dumb, per se, it reflects. It reflects off the viewer, and the viewer doesn't know what the hell to give back. Does that make sense? He was in the Amazon with my mom when she was researching spiders right before she died. Searching for that spider for years. And Ezekiel took the spiders and became a millionaire or whatever, and he has powers now. So get this, he has a dream. He will be defeated in battle. And my God, this dream sequence. Okay, when I was watching the movie, I got about 15 minutes in, and I'm thinking, okay, this movie's not all that great. Uh, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen. Holy shit. All of that doesn't actually happen in the movie. All that is a dream sequence that Mr. Ezekiel sees, and now he's paranoid about and builds a dream machine that can recreate accurate images of his dreams. But wait! And then find people in real life based on his dreams. So it's too much power for one person. Ta da! Bravo, Sony. Bravo. You got Venom. You got. What else do you got? You got the Amazing Spider Man. You got. Uh, you got. I mean, you kind of lucked out with uh, the Spider Verse movies. I don't know what happened there. I think somebody else took the reins for that. Now you got this, and now you're planning on going to Craven next, and uh, something about a wrestler? Nutcha! Who? I mean, I guess I should have seen from the wish-washy marketing train wreck that was Dakota Johnson. I know that when you see Madam Web, you're gonna love it. In fact, I think you're gonna see it twice. Not being sure whether or not she wanted to seduce the viewer into watching the movie twice, or wash her hands of it entirely, and then fire her agent as soon as the movie premieres. It's Hollywood, baby. The setting is an interesting flavor. It's set in 2003 because they wanted a certain song. But still set in 2003 so that you could have the song. Toxic. What's your take on that? My name is Jeff. And apparently they used music that wasn't even on radio play at the time. So what was the point of that? Well, I always wanted to tell a story about a woman who was seeing the future, thought she was seeing the future and then finding the character within the Spider-Verse, Madam Web has no backstory. And so that really gave us a lot of freedom. When I plucked her from Black Mesa, I acted in the face of objections. And the editing, oh my God. Okay, so let's, <laughs> the editing in this movie is silly. You know those moments in a movie where, say like the Avengers, when someone's about to go fly off, there are moments where You'll see someone leap, and right when you're thinking their momentum should pick up, it doesn't. It just, the camera cuts away entirely, and it's just so obvious. And the camera loves to do this rotating, flipping thing. 
whenever action's going on, and it's so ridiculously overdone and unnecessary. The dream sequences, oh, don't get me started on the dream sequences. You're talking about dreams? The dream sequences are a bit over-edited. They keep going on for far too long. They'll show you what's going on in the near future. They'll show you what's going on in the far future. Then it'll cut back to what happened before this car. you know, misplace different details and switch it up. And the entire sequence will start again. As soon as the, the vision started happening, they seemed, they felt like they would go on for about five minutes. They got to the point where I felt like the dream sequences were padding. Is this where all the time is going? Just these sequences that are just like going back and forth and pretending to move the movie along, but it's not actually. All right, without further ado, I'll wrap it up here. That's about all I really wanted to talk about. Overall, this is what I think about the movie. I don't know. Uh, if it's between the Marvels and this, uh, I, I, this movie, Madam Web is it's a good laugh. Have you guys uh, sacrificed your two hours of life and have seen this film? Uh, what's the worst part about it? What's the worst aspect of it to you? The costumes? Is it just the writing? Is it is it is it uh, Dakota Johnson's marketing? that was just like the biggest stinker to you. Uh, let me know in the comments below and hopefully you guys have a good day and I will see you guys next time. Out.